Hey team, today we're going to talk about the YouTube API. We're going to use it to build a playlist gallery in Next.js. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. We're all probably pretty familiar with YouTube and the experience it provides us, but you don't get a ton of customization options like the header and maybe some links. And while you can embed a player and even the playlist player, it's still a black box into YouTube.com itself. So today we're going to use the YouTube API to pull a playlist like this right onto your website. We'll create this little YouTube gallery that links to the videos, but this is really just an example of how you can use it for your site. So to get started for our app, we're going to use Next.js. To create a new project, we're going to run yarn create next app. We'll then ask a few questions like what our project name is. I'll call it my YouTube playlist, hit enter. And then we can CD into that directory and run yarn dev and we'll spin up our server and we're ready to go. So inside our code, we have a basic Next.js app. We're gonna use the get server side props function. So we're gonna run export async function, get server side props. And this is where we're gonna return our data. We're gonna return a props property. That way we can add our data and make it available to our home function. But we need to fetch that data first. So for this part, we're gonna use the YouTube API. Particularly, we're gonna use the playlist items list API. We're here, we're gonna make a request to this playlist items endpoint along with any of the required parameters we need, like the part, which we're gonna use the snippet, and the ID and the playlist ID. So let's start off by creating a constant that stores the endpoints. So we're gonna say constant YouTube playlist items API, and we're gonna set it equal to that string. Then we're gonna actually wanna make that request. So we're gonna say const response equals await, and we'll use the fetch API, and we'll pass in that API endpoint. Next, since we're using that fetch API, we're gonna use a constant data equals await response JSON. And then we can simply copy and paste that data object right in our props, where we can then destructure it from our home. And to test this out to make sure it works, I'm gonna just console log out data. And if we look in our browser, we can see that we're getting a response, but we're getting an error. That's because we're not passing in our API key. To get an API key, we're gonna to wanna to use the Google Developer Console. I'm already logged into a project here, but I'm gonna go through the process of creating a new one so we can test this out. So if we click the drop down here, we'll see where we can select a new project or we can create a new one. So we're gonna create a new project. I'm gonna call it my YouTube playlist and I'll click create and it'll start kicking out the create process. And after it's done creating, it's not gonna reselect it for you. So you wanna go back up to this dropdown and you wanna select your new project. So the first thing we wanna actually get is our credentials. So we can click over our credentials and then we're gonna to wanna to go up to create credentials and we'll select API key. Now this API key should be secure. You don't wanna share this with anybody. That way somebody's not gonna be able to abuse your account with making requests on behalf of you. But at this point, make sure you copy it down so that we can save it for later use. So while we're in here, we wanna do one more thing. We wanna set it up so that we can actually use the API for YouTube. So we're gonna go over to the library and we're gonna search for the YouTube API and we'll select version three. And at this point, you can just hit enable. And once the page reloads, you'll get a dashboard that'll show all your activity for that particular API. So now that we have our API key, we wanna actually use it. Since it's secure, we wanna make sure that we use it in a way that's not gonna leak out. So let's create an environment file where at the root of our project, let's create an end dot local file where we can create a new environment variable called YouTube API key. And inside that we want to paste our new key. Since we're using Next.js, they already know to look in end.local for anything we want to use for our local app. So at this point, we want to tack our API key onto the end of this endpoint. So first let's make this a template tag and I'll make this a variable inside of it. Then we can say question mark key equals another variable process.env.youtube API key. And at this point, since we added a new environment variable, make sure you restart your server. But if we open up back up our browser, we're still seeing an error, but now it's saying no filter selected. So that means our API key is working, we're just not using the endpoint right. So the first thing you wanna add is the part. And for this, we're gonna use the snippet. So back on our endpoint, let's add a new parameter called part and set that equal to snippet and put an and sign to separate those out. Next, we wanna add our playlist ID. For me, I'm gonna use this react.js playlist of mine. So I'm gonna grab this ID right at the end of that URL. So now I'll go back into my file and I'll say playlist ID equals that value. And now if I go to the browser, I can open up that data object and I can see a bunch of items already showing up. This is only showing five items though and my playlist has 13. So how can we get all the results? YouTube API allows you to send in max results where you can pass in zero to 50. So you can't do any amount you want, but we can at least get 50. So for this, I'm also gonna pass in max results equals 50. Now my browser, I can see all 13 results. Now that we have those results, let's actually use them. So the first thing, I'm gonna replace this headline with my playlist just so that we know what we're looking at. I'm also gonna get rid of the description since we don't really need that. For our content, I'm gonna reuse this styles.grid that they already have. 
but two things. First, I want to build this programmatically. So I'll first get rid of them all except one. And I want to also change this to an unordered list to be a little bit better HTML. So that means I'm also going to wrap it with a list element. And I'm going to move that class name up to that list element. So now I want to dynamically create those items. So I'm going to say data.items, and I'm going to create a map, where inside of that map, I'm going to create a new function where the argument is going to be a single item, and I'm going to return this list element, which is what will contain our HTML. So at this point, let's console log out that item to see what we're working with. If we look in our browser, we can open up one of these objects and we can see a few things that we want. We're gonna want the ID. That way we can set an identifier on each of those list elements. We're also gonna want a thumbnail and we're gonna want that title. So to get started, let's first destructure that ID from the item. That way we can set a key on our list element. We also wanna destructure our snippet, which will set to an empty object by default. Then we can destructure our title from that snippet. And then we can replace the H3 content with that title, and we can also get rid of this paragraph tag since we don't need it. And if we look at the browser, we can already see all of our titles. So next, let's also destructure our thumbnails, which will set as an empty object by default, as well as the medium thumbnail, which will set empty by default from thumbnails. And from there, above our H3, we can create a new paragraph tag, which will create a new image with the width of medium.width, the height of medium.height, a source of medium.url, and an empty alt since we're already representing that thumb with the title. And now if we look back, we can see all of our videos with our thumbnails. But the only difference is if you look at the link and hover over, it's not actually the right link yet. So inside of these items in the snippet, we can also grab the resource ID, which gives the video ID. So that way we can dynamically create that link. So first we can destructure our resource ID from our snippet. Then I'm going to replace this href with the beginning of the actual YouTube URL. I'm going to use this resource ID with the video ID to create that URL. And now if I try to click one of these links, it goes right over to the video. And the last thing, we have a little bit of a style issue. We have these bullets from the unordered list and this should really be a two column grid. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the home.module.css file where I'm going to find that grid class. I'm also going to add list style equals none. I'm going to set a padding of zero and a margin left of zero. And that looks better, but we still don't have that two column grid. So I'm also gonna add a style below, grid image, and I'm gonna say max width equals 100%. And while the items aren't necessarily filling up all the space, we can see that we now have our two columns. To at least try to make it so that the items all align to the top, we can change align items to flex start. Now all of them aren't the same height, but at least they're all aligning to the top, so it looks a little bit more consistent. And from here, if you wanna deploy the app, you can simply use the Vercel CLI to do that. If you already have an account with Vercel and you're logged in, running Vercel will deploy that application for you. Since it's Next.js, it'll already know how to configure everything. The only thing you wanna make sure you remember to do is add an environment variable for your YouTube API key. So if you followed along with me, you learned how to use the YouTube API to fetch items from a playlist. We generated an API key and we used that to make a request to the playlist items endpoint. While you can request items from a playlist, the YouTube API has a ton of features like analytics and other video features that you can use. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.